I don't know if it's been established before on this program, but I've never been in a wreck. Uh, I have. Yes, you have. No, well, no I, I've been in a we, like a single car spin out, like a tire went up under the car. What about that time that we went in the ditch? I wasn't driving. Oh yeah, you've been in my car when I've had a wreck. Yeah. <laughs> but I've never be, been in control of a vehicle that ran into another vehicle. That's never never happened. Okay. Okay. That got my streak got very very close to coming to an end the other day. We were, um, and th this is, and you experienced fear. Oh yeah. Okay. You're Today fine. in Good Mythical More, we are sharing our deepest fears. This is Rhett. It involves really, traffic. He's, he's kind of being sensational. It's not my deepest fear, but I was very scared, and I guarantee you, if someone could smell fear in the pits, they would have smelled it in my pits at this point. Or in your pants. How bad was it? What happened? No, no, nothing happened in the pants. I was on the. We five. probably should have been smelling our pants. I did not do anything in my pants. Did you crap your pants <laughs> when Chase came out? Yeah, when I don't know, it was it's like you that, got tomatoes in your mouth. When huh? the tomato went in my mouth, did you spit it out? I was like, da da, da da. Okay, well, I set was, the scene, right? I was I'm on not the five. You, really? You're not gonna interrupt? I was on the five, yeah. and that's the interstate. Interstate, and uh, going along as we do, uh, very fast. Who's we? The, the people in the, in the cars. Oh. In, in California, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I, okay, here's a, a little picture as to what it's like to live in Los Angeles. I was driving my car the other day, previous story. I don't drive a lot because we carpool together uh, quite a bit, and I've only had this, this car for about a year. But as I was going down the interstate, are you, you're itching a lot over there. Are you allergic to something? <laughs> I'm worried about you. I'm trying not to interrupt Just settle in a little bit. Um, I realized I have no idea where the cruise control button is on my car. I spent 15 minutes while driving. On the pilot or the? On the FJ Cruiser. Okay. No I, no idea where it's at. <laughs> and then I realized I've never used it. You don't, when, in North Carolina, you, like, you're always on cruise control. Like every single road you get on, cruise control, cruise control, interstate, cruise control. <laughs> in California, you never use cruise control. At least in, in Los Angeles, you don't because you can't get up enough speed, the speed to use control. And the speed is dictated by the traffic, which is the in front of you. The speed is dictated by the traffic. Right. No, no matter how far you're going. Or case, how fast the traffic's going. Or how fast. Sometimes case I'll go point, 90. 90. Case in point, I was an hour away from home, uh, down south of here, for a, a dive meet for my son. And I'm flying along. I don't even know. How, I, in fact, I have the steering wheel set up so that it covers how fast I'm going. Like I have the steering wheel <laughs> purposely set so I can't even see the speedometer part. Well, that's not why you have it there. You have it there because that's where it's most comfortable. But incidentally, I can't see how fast I'm going. But it doesn't matter. Right. You just go the speed of the car in front of you. Right. I assume we were going 80. Okay. And you know how you're going along on the interstate and it's pretty much free flowing, but there's a lot of cars. Yeah. And all of a sudden somebody stops ahead of you, the person in, ahead of me slammed on brakes. It wasn't like, oh, the traffic's slowing down. It was like, Eek! and they veered off and missed the car in front of them. And there's multiple things happening up there. All I had time to do was completely slam on brakes. I've never been going 80 miles per hour and literally s slammed on the brakes all the way to the floor. Wow. And this was in the FJ? No, this was in the pilot. Oh, okay. And my whole family's in the car. And I'm quickly approaching the car in front of me. And I realize that I'm not skidding because the anti-lock brake, anti brakes have been activated, meaning I'm slowing down very quickly, but I'm not losing any You're traction. Not skidding. And I'm coming right to the back of this van. That the car in front of you missed. And then there and I'm in the left, I'm in the left-hand lane. I'm in the HOV lane. And then there's the car in the lane, and then there's the the side shoulder or whatever, and then there's the barrier. I, I'm coming at this guy and I'm, like, I'm going to hit him. Jesse closed her eyes. She closed her, she told me after, she says, I closed my eyes and went like this, racing for impact. <laughs> so that's what she, she didn't does. Grab, she just put her ball to her fist up. And I, because the anti-light brakes were on, I was able to still steer, and I steered, and I was like, I'm gonna try to shoot in between this guy. So instead of hitting between him, in the, him and who? The wall. Oh. So I was like, I'm either gonna ram this guy in the back or I'm just gonna slide in between him and the guardrail. You're gonna wedge. And I missed him and I went like halfway up the length of his car and, I, and it was like 
this much on either side. And I, and I was actually going like this, like. <sighs> squeezing your, squeezing in. <laughs> and then, realize, no contact. But you came to a complete stop? No, I didn't even come to a complete stop. Because as I came to a stop, I, I was coming to a stop, he was coming to a stop, and then he like rolled because the, the track, because you know, it was something ha no one knows what happened. Nothing happened. It's one of those weird things where like somebody slows down and then somebody forgets to slow down. And Did you make eye contact with the guy? No, I, ne I never got all the way up to him. I got to the back door, like the, you know, the side door. And then we just pulled back in. And when was anybody in the back seat that you were looking at? Good son, good see. But I got back into the, the, lane and you just continued on and after something like that happens you're kind of like adrenaline like is the car okay can it break that hard is it, is it did it hurt the car what did the kids say uh they just we just began talking about what had just happened like i was like i knew we were going to hit that car and jesse was like i was going like this i don't remember what shepherd said <laughs> but my adrenaline was pumping yeah i've there's been many a times, uh, as you know, that I've almost hit. You mean all, every time I get in the car with you? people. I, I, Link has almost hit a pedestrian. <laughs> Twice today. Maybe seven times in the past month. On the way in, I almost hit a guy. I'm not joking. You, what, when you're by yourself, who tells you that the pedestrians are there? Because it's always me when I'm driving with you. The pedestrians. <laughs> I had a guy on a bike that almost hit, slam his hand down on the top of the car. Or was that Christy? Was that her story or my story? It all runs together when you're one flesh. Um, wow. um, Do you get that feeling like I, if, I, if I'm driving and I have to set my brakes, there's something happens? Adrenaline. Like, no, but like, I feel like tingling. Like yes, it, it is a shot of adrenaline. It, it doesn't go to my legs, it goes to my hands because my hands are where all the vehicle control is. I've, I've noticed this many times. Uh, again, every single time I almost hit a pedestrian, all the energy in my body go, is transferred to my hands and I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. I love it. And that that That's reveals, your problem. right, I'm addicted to almost hitting people. It's like, I was, you know, that dream that I told you about, it was, I'm, I joked about hitting the Google employee going to the Oscars. But that was in jest. It was in jest. I, maybe I have a problem. I think you just forget that you're driving. Well, when someone else is in the car, I, I just loosen up. I'm, I, cause you know, you can point out that well, pedestrian. Well, no, I, I think it's that you are, when someone's in the car, you're having a conversation with them. And I'm distracted. And when you're having a conversation with them, you can't also drive. My worst fear is is uh, hitting a pedestrian. That's, that's a pretty bad thing to, to, to happen. I mean, you feel horrible. I mean, you've hit them and they're laying there. What do you do? You have to call. I saw a guy riding his bike to the sidewalk and he's turning Was he still laying on the road? Yeah. Was he okay? Oh. My worst fear is, um, I got lots of fears. I mean, I was, I, got lots of fears, man. I was afraid that you guys are gonna spring some sort of animal. And when the, um, when the frosted mini weeks were in the bowl and before I took my thing off, I smelled them and I thought it was an animal. <laughs> Yeah, it was frosted meat. I, I thought I smelled like a furry animal, and I was afraid it was going to be a scary animal, um, like a trained dog that was like a scary, trained to be quiet. A scary furry animal that fits um, in a bowl. <laughs> I did not smell Chase, but I did smell the frosted mini weeds. I, I can't wait to see what that Chase thing. But I'm afraid. Like. I'm afraid of the dark. I was. Everyone was asleep at my house, so I tried to go into my bedroom the other night um, and get in bed without turning any lights on to wake up Christy, and I had to put. Chrissy's like hot natured, so she doesn't like to put a lot of um, covers on her side of the bed, and it's only a, a double bed. I've, bed. I've seen, I've seen. So it. I take like a throw, and I put a throw over all the covers that we use collectively, just on my side of the bed. But I was trying to find the throw, and I was holding it up, and it was white, and it kind of reminded me of a goat. You scared yourself in the same <laughs> room with your wife? I scared myself by holding up a 
a throw that looked like a ghost. <laughs> but I, it wasn't like, I was like, oh, I'm afraid, but this is irrational. I had to talk myself, okay, it's fine. And I honestly, I reverted back to childhood. I was like, I'll feel but I had to take my pants off. I had on these like pajama pants. I know I'm giving a lot of details here, but I was like, if I can just get these pants off and they were tight around the ankle and I had a tough time getting them over my foot. And I was like, what? If you what? could get, get the pants if off, I, what happens? I, the ghost I, goes away? If I can just, this is what I thought, if I can just get these pants off and get into bed, everything will be okay. But what like, is what, what is wrong though? What is not okay already? The ghost. The ghost. Now I'll be honest Nartu with you. Fowdy. When I'm home alone, like if, if, if my family's out of town and I'm completely home alone, like late at night, like walking into the bedroom, like I, I'll have some things, like, I'll have some like thoughts like, <laughs> like, what if ghosts are real? <laughs> it's like we revert back to like being eight or seven. But hey, I'm by myself though. It's, you, he it's healthy because it gets you're you. You're in the room with another adult. Like well, I'm here next to the bed, and you're you're scared of a sheet that you're holding in front of your face. <laughs> you need help, man. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> There was never a point in my life that I would be scared in a room with somebody else. Who is there with that sheet? Oh, it's me. It's like. I never feel safe when wearing pants. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, now that we both have dogs, <coughs> oh. uh, so animals uh, besides our children in our homes, uh, this kind of besides our children. This this opens up a whole world of possibility. For for um, us to put those dogs to work. Well, I mean, putting them- That has not happened uh, so far in my house. But well, putting them to work is one thing. Training them is another thing. I, I you know what? I'm gonna have to bring in Barbara and Barbara's gonna have to put on a little show for y'all. Oh you gosh, that's, uh, I don't wanna do, you know what? Barbara- I don't wanna see no show. Barbara Mandrell is- I have not trained Jay. Doing so some I don't wanna, amazing things. And uh, so now you're gonna sit here and brag about them? Well, I mean, you know I'm, what? I'm here, just gonna bring her in and show them to here's you. Here's my question. I'm really sensitive to this because I'm not training She's Jake serving us. to do any She's tricks. She's getting drinks for us. So I don't wanna hear about how much better she is because I know that Jade is like, it, she, she it, rules it, the place and it's wrong. It has nothing to do with whose can dog I send her, is better. I'm just saying. Can I send her to your house can't to be Barbara, trained? Can't Barbara just come in and just strut her stuff and it has nothing to do with what, what dog is better? It's just, if she can do lots of tricks and your dog can't do any, hmm. it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't say anything about your dog. It just means that Barbara's amazing. My dog is nothing but but a uh, love sponge. She can do no tricks, and there's no one teaching her any tricks because every time that they do interact with her, it's just, they just do this. There's, not, there's nothing besides that for her. She's spoiled, and she almost put my eye out. Can I tell that, that story? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I love Jade, but if she puts my eye out, <clears throat> my feelings may change a little bit. Um, what can what can Barbara do? Just just rattle it off. Just go ahead and do it. Well, I, I, mean, I didn't mean to cut it. Cut, we've only, cut, I've only cut had short. her a couple of weeks, and she's you know she's only three months old, but she can uh, she can sit, she can stay, she can beg, like she can stand up, she can ring a bell on the door before she goes outside um, to poop. Yeah. So That's and, she, and she can poop. Yeah. If I could teach Jade to just poop <clears throat> on command, because I sat outside, um, you know, I was waiting for her to poop. Well, she can't poop the, on command. In the I front mean, yard. I mean, she if she has to poop, she'll ring the bell. Oh, so you don't ring the bell and she poops? No, ori I did, I, originally, yes, that's what I did. And I didn't know, I don't know anything about this. It was just the person the, at the adoption place was just like, here, take this bell, and when you go out the door that they, they're gonna poop out of, the area of the yard they're gonna poop in, ring this bell. And eventually, and now she goes up and she rings the bell and then she sits and she turns and looks at us. She's, and she's like, I know I'm, it's Pavlov, man. See, what I do is I took Jade out to poop because I knew she needed to. And then um, she wouldn't go. And she's like sniffing around forever. And I eventually sit down under the tree in my front yard. Yeah. And then she, she darts off into the street, which, I have, I'm having some work done in my backyard, which is secured, so she can't run out anywhere. But this is an exceptional time because of the work being done back there. She darted out into the street, and so I dart out after her. I stand up, 
and I stand up right into a tree limb which hits me right here, takes my glasses off, hits a, above my eyelid, scrapes all the way around my eyeball, or all the way below it, and I just, I, I thought I was blinded. Um, went after the dog, caught her, um, brought her in the house, and then I was, I was, I was pretty traumatized. Yep, sounds like it. Because it hurt really, really badly. And then I was like, where are my glasses? And I couldn't figure it out. I, I was so traumatized, I'd forgotten that I was even wearing glasses and they were knocked off outside in the dark. I, was, I looked in the house for my glasses for like the next 15 minutes. And then I realized, hold on, I was wearing them. Because I was convinced I wasn't <laughs> wearing them because my eyes wouldn't have been poked out. They would have been protected. Um, and it, I mean, it was a, it was a big limb too. It wasn't like a little limb that was, and it's like one of those things that I wish it was caught on video because it's, you know, it's like, one, like running through a spider web. It's like I, I stood up really fast and then probably. Is that like a spider web that's really big and brown that yeah, you can put see? your eye out. Um, but then I went back inside with a flashlight and I eventually found the glasses there, even though I was convinced that I wasn't wearing them at all because when I chased the dog, I didn't have them. I was like, oh, I must have gone inside I came out with my glasses. Um, I don't know who needs to be trained here the more I think about it. Maybe it's me. I think it, maybe I'm the problem. I don't know. I don't know. She'll but sit. Is it in the, do you have the situation, see, I, I don't have a front yard, so the part of the yard that we let her out into, like, is completely fenced off, and, like, we actually had a little fence installed to, like, keep her in one area. Uh-huh. Um, so she doesn't have an opportunity to to run off anywhere and she hasn't gotten her last shot so she can't go out into just random grass so i don't know what she would do if you just put her in a front yard if she would because this is the thing all the dogs that i ever had growing up you know of course back in the 80s and early 90s when the dogs that the mclaughlin's had there was no training these dogs it was just mm -hmm. like we're going to build a pen in the back of course the dogs can't come in the house to eat it we're gonna build a pen in the back and we're gonna put a dog house in it. Just typical southern dog style. And then Southern dog. And you can and you're gonna play with that dog occasionally, but you're not gonna teach it to do anything. And if you let it out of the pen, it's just gonna run off into the distance. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the way we did dogs in the south growing mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to two of our dogs, is they eventually did just run off into the horizon. And I don't never know that saw that's a southern thing, to be fair. I think that's just a, like a, I'm, I don't actually want to have a dog, but for some reason I do. But, but don't you think that was much more prominent, not necessarily in the South, but back in, in the day, like in the 80s and 90s, like before Caesar had a television show? Exactly, that was the way you did a dog. It's just like a yard feature. And if somebody, a dog in it. And if somebody had a dog that could like sit and stay or like walk next to them outside without a leash, you were like, that uppity person has a dog that obeys. Kind of like what I did at the at the beginning with you, with like yeah, yeah. It's like I don't want to hear about your um, ringing a bell, dog ringing a bell. But I'll tell you the, really? thing, the thing that I've been absolutely amazed at because having grown up in a, you know a home where we didn't do any actual dog training um, is how quickly they pick. Like this, this is the thing, this is what should give you hope. If you just start doing like two or three things consistently, like within a day, they will have, the, she will have something down. Like I've been like, like, oh, we also taught her off because she's a, she's a biter and she's a puppy, and she, but she's wor a lot worse than Jade about biting and the way she like shows you that she loves you is by beginning to consume you with her little needle teeth. But we taught her off and the way, and of course, and everybody has the internet now. It's like, what were you gonna do? Go to the library and look up at a dog training book back in the day? No, nobody would do that. So we didn't even know what to do. But like, yeah, who reads books? So I put, it, I just go on these sites or go to these YouTube channels and there's some of them are hilarious. But put a treat in your hand and then the dog like comes up and she's like trying to get to the treat because she can smell it in there and you say off. And until she stops and when she stops, you give her the treat. And so now she just, as soon as you take a treat and put it in your hand, she just sits down and looks at you and waits for it. Like the third time that we did that, she was like, oh, I get it. If you have a treat in your hand, if I want it, I just have to sit and look at it. And so you can't even teach her the off command because 
she just thinks, so I've had to do some other things, but they pick things up quick, man. You can have uh, Jade ringing bells and scratching records and doing all kinds of things. Giving kids henna tattoos, that's one of the things that we've got on Barbara's list. <laughs> Face painting and henna. It's gonna be like a... How long does henna last? I don't know, when dogs do it, I think it'll last two to three times as long. Because of the saliva, because of the bacterial makeup of the saliva. We're basically turning our house into like a, like a county fair run by dogs. 